2009, Nick Perkett dominated the Formula 4 championship, claiming 12 race wins and along the way breaking Steve Richards' long-held record for the most ever Formula 4 race wins. This year, the 21-year-old is stepping out of open wheelers and into the Fujitsu Development Series. It's been an eye-opener for me. I've come from leading the way in a Formula Ford to um, now find myself back in fifth, sixth in, the, in practice. It's a bit of a different story for me, but uh, it's a good challenge and um, it's a, only going to grow for it, from it, so I'm looking forward to the challenge. Through his association with Walkinshaw Racing, there's been some high expectations placed on this young driver's shoulders. But thanks to some close contact with some more experienced drivers in the paddock, his own high ambitions are being kept in check. Um, I've got a fair bit of pressure on myself, but um, I've got the likes of Garth and Will um, to kind of mentor me along and they always tell me just to do my own thing and um, keep it cool and the results will come. Nick isn't the only ex-open wheeler competing in this year's Fujitsu Championship. His good mate Tim Blanchard won the 2007 Formula 4 Championship with Sonic Motor Racing. And after some time spent away in Europe racing, he's returned and reunited with the team to follow his V8 supercar dream. And like any champion, he too has lofty goals. Yeah start the year off we just kind of want to see where we're at and just improve throughout the year but at the end of the year we want to be fighting for wins and yeah push pushing the leaders for the championship. And according to Tim there have been some benefits in starting his career in V8s at exactly the same time as a fellow Formula 4 champion. It's good we kind of bounce ideas off each other and work together a little bit to help and close the gap to the experienced guys in the category but then again you know he's in the same boat as I am both rookies and we both want to make sure that we're the best rookie out there so at the end of the day, it is competitive, but we do help each other out a little bit. Another 24 laps ahead in the second race in the first round of the Fujitsu V8 Supercar Series. And the grid for this one is the finishing order from race one. So Steve Owen and James Moffat will start on the front row. John McIntyre and Nick Perkat from row two. And some impressive performances from many of these guys who now get another chance with the added knowledge from race one. Also another chance off the line to learn a little bit more, so there'll be a lot better starts I'm predicting this time. Marcus Sukanovic from ninth was given a 10 second time penalty from race one for starting outside of his start box. Paul Morris is back on the grid, as is Matthew Hamilton, who had an engine problem in the Team Kiwi car. Adam Wallace won't start. Engine problems for the South Australian have put him out. But we go back to the front, and this time James Moffat with a fantastic launch. The Norton 360 Falcon made a great initial jump, but in the second phase of the start, Steve Owen was too strong. So you just picked him with second gear, oh, oh, oh. a contact there back in the field. Zakanovic, Jane and Fiore all got together, and look at Nick Perkat going the long way down at turn four. John McIntyre's been swamped by the youngsters. A lot of action here on the first lap, a lot of opportunity to make some good passing. Owen leads, then Moffat, Perkat, Blanchard, McIntyre. Jeff Emery's made a great start in the NDD Commodore. Then it's Ann Pedersen and Paul Fiore. And David Russell charging through. Don't forget, he started way back, 14th on the grid, but he's got the pace to run with the leaders. Turn eight on the first lap is always exciting. Close, everyone's really, really close. Oh, Moffat out close to the wall, McIntyre into the fence, and the Fujitsu Falcon bounces across into the inside wall. And the day's done for the Kiwi. I wouldn't like to go and have to explain that, which I've had to do a couple of times. It's, uh, it's always hard to do. This is the car run by Stone Brothers Racing. We'll see young Scott McLaughlin behind the wheel later in the season, but no surprises that the Petters safety car has moved out onto the circuit at the end of this first lap. This is such an easy thing to do on the first lap here, Noonan. He's come in there awfully quick, really close. He's clipped the curve on the inside there and just fired him into the wall. That's gonna, oh, that's gonna hurt. He's done a lot of damage in the rear, put him into the wall on the other side. A poor, poor kid has to go back and explain that one. Speaking from experience, James? I think I did that in that same car. Or maybe one like it. I've done it a couple of times. <laughs> and the way that the car bounces off the wall into the other one, just to put... It's good that it stayed on that side of the circuit for him. Just adds a really insult to injury there, so... Stand by for your confirmation. Under safety car. Um, there are 
recovery of this vehicle and the timing of restart. And the voice you're hearing is Damien White, the operations coordinator of the Fujitsu Series. Rodney Jane's in for a right front tyre change. More race two when we come back. Time to restart race two of the Fujitsu V8 Supercar Series. And James Moffat and Nick Perkat not afraid to give Steve Owen the hurry up. Oh, it's a bit of a hurry up on the line there on the start, wasn't there, Nunes? Bit of nose to tail action. And for many of these drivers, we've talked about it being their first weekend in V8s. Look at Ed Pedersen, locked it up, squeezed up the inside and got the job done. But for many of them, it's their first go at a restart in these cars. Yeah, look, it's, uh, they're a hard car to get off the, off the mark when, uh, when you're stationary, but when they're loaded in a corner and there's about 30 other guys around you trying to get into it, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Paul Fiore here with Marcus Sakanovic behind, then Ryan Hansford and the Russell boys, Drew and Aaron, brothers competing this year in the series in a couple of ex-Brad Jones Falcons. Oh, that's close. <laughs> Now, I remember people saying stick with Dunlop. I didn't remember hearing them try to take it off the fence, but look at Blanchard. Straight down the gap on Perkett. <laughs> These two said they'd be working together, but I'm not buying it. There's more action down the back. It's a great corner that night. Zukanovic slotting in in front of Drew Russell. Aaron McGill making a move, and Fiori's got a drama with the Triple F Commodore, but Drew Russell's fighting his way back through because they had another shock absorber problem in race one. They've run out of Oldham, so they've had to move to the Penske shock for race two, and they don't know a thing about it, so they're going to find out pretty quick. This car, this track is very hard on cars, especially this section through over the curb here. It's uh, very tough. His mirror's hanging off there. Hopefully he doesn't get done for that. Doesn't really look to be flapping too hard. If he was in a ute race, we'd say that was completely normal. <laughs> they've settled into an early rhythm in this second race. Owen clearing away, Moffat chasing. And here's David Russell, the Team Jayco Falcon. This is a former Mark Winterbottom FPR car. So it's got great pedigree and great speed. And he's driving his way back towards the front and really trying to salvage some points. He's got a couple of rookies in front of him. So hopefully uh, he can pull the wool over their eyes and uh, outsmart them. But just have to wait and see. Hard under brakes, down to turn nine knocking off about 180 kilometres worth of speed into this braking area and that's a nice move from Drew Russell who's been around this category for quite a few years driving an ex-Brad Jones Racing Falcon. That's one of my favourite passing moves into nine. It's second gear normally but you can grab first, lock the rears and slide it in nicely. And that mirror on Nick Perkat's Commodore continues to flap in the breeze. It's pretty hard to try to get rid of it though. You can't really put your hand out the window and throw it away or you don't really want to rub it up against the concrete wall either. You're just hoping that it'll drop off. And if the mirror is still in it, it uh, flickers around and catches your attention. But I'm sure he's got his uh, his eyes full of... Oh, oh, oh. a huge slide there, noobs. Oh, Man. the big lockup. Action pack. Russell Mr. down the inside on Pedersen. That, that was a big slide. That was awesome. That was huge. But it's not fast. That's the only problem. It looks good, though. It looks good. Points for effort. Russell through on his teammate, Ant Pedersen, who Matthew White, the team owner, said he's brought such enthusiasm and it's, it's contagious. So this team is really on and up this weekend. Perkett ran a little wide there in seven and it's cost him on the run down here. I wouldn't be surprised if Russell lunges him into nine. Turn eight's not a passing move, but it's a place to set... Right! Oh, man, that was awesome. That was all but in the fence, those two, and Russell will get the move done. And... I need to have a lie down. That was close. <laughs> that was mega. He kept his foot into it. Didn't even mark the mirror, Noonan. Perfect, perfect stuff. And it's that sort of driving that's got David Russell a gig at the endurance races for Nick Johnson Racing, where he'll drive with his old rival and your teammate, Jonathan Webb. No, he's, uh, he's done a test day with us, and uh, I'll be keeping him away from my car after seeing that. <laughs> He is attacking. Next on the list is Tim Blanchard. So he's managed to work his way up to fourth place now. There's 150 championship points for the winner of each of these races. This is awesome. Look at that. Speedway. Morris would be impressed with that. 
This is a replay a little further around the lap. A spin from young Aaron Russell, who steps up from Formula V's and has done a pretty good job for a young fellow. A lot to learn, but very promising signs. As the race goes on, these cars are pretty tough in the braking area, as you can see. And now, Blanchard's done that a couple of times in this race. That right front tyre is going to be really hurting, and no doubt there's a flat spot there. Yeah, look, that's gonna, that's really going to struggle and hurt him on the left-hand corners. He's going to have a lot of push. You'll feel it vibrating through the car, and every time he goes to get on the brakes and try and brake late, it's going to keep grabbing in that same point. Russell, we need one of those big turn eight moves again. This guy is awesome. He's tucked right in the slipstream, and that's actually hard because it's hard to see where the curb is, where the corner is, and where your turning point is. You can't see anything. This guy is not scared. Look at him. Awesome. Wasn't quite as uh, exciting as the last one, but yet gets the job done. And that's for third place. So within nine laps, David Russell has moved up 11 spots. That is pretty much the drive of the race. He's done a great job here. He's obviously worked on the car overnight and, and uh, fine-tuned it. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to catch the others, though. He's got some clear air ahead. The chase is on now for James Moffat and Steve Owen. They lead the way in race two on the streets of Adelaide. A great run here. Drew Russell started 17th. He's managed to work the Zamana Falcon up to eighth overall. More action from Adelaide in just a few moments. with the Fujitsu V8 supercars. And while we were gone, it was bad news for Nick Perkat. Officials black flag him to pit lane to remove that mirror. Oh, and Paul Fiore damaged the right front suspension with that launch over the curb. That was big impact there, Noonan. And Pedersen's been on a charge, but Tim Blanchard has been struggling. A flat-spotted tyre on the Sonic Falcon made him vulnerable, and the Kiwi got the move done down at turn nine. That was for fourth place. Aaron McGill, the most experienced Fujitsu starter in the field, found the fence. But Steve Owen, although he's out in front, he hasn't backed off the pace. He's doing an incredible job here this weekend, Noonan. Not one mistake. Look at him. Through the curve, perfect. Not one foot wrong. James Moffat still in second place in the Norton 360 Ford Rising Stars Falcon. Looking on, Kevin Murphy, team principal of Greg Murphy Racing, and to the right, Dean Lilly, team manager, former racer himself. They're all looking pretty relaxed there. They're about to uh, double their race wins. Yeah, they won their first one in the Fujitsu Series in race one. They're on target for their second race and first ever round win. And this is the reason why they brought Steve Owen in. A bit of a hired gun for the weekend to prove exactly what this car, which was driven last year by Jason Barguana in the main game, can really do. See, that's the beauty about street circuits, Noonan. The car mightn't be perfect, but a good, experienced driver can drag a car around a street circuit and get the most out of it. So it's exactly what he's done here. Moffat is six seconds behind in second. David Russell, third. And this is Nick Perkett back on the road. On the gas, Noonan. Love that. And I think it's just uh, down to a bit of tie wear towards the end of the race. And clearly frustrated by that penalty because he's dropped right back to 11th in this race. And he was on target for another top five, but nevertheless has been a very good showing from the reigning Formula 4 champ. But this is the guy who has set the benchmark, Steve Owen. Two laps to go in race two. And you can see there on the driver's mirror a bit of an addition. Yeah, that's, a, that's a little duck there. These boys don't, a lot of them don't run cool suits. And with the longer races than what they normally have, it, uh, it helps with ventilation in the cabin to keep them cool. You just hear there these left and right corners accelerating up to about 130 then back to 80 up to 130 get the car to ride the curb this exit curb here as well and it's very important here noon get off that curb nicely and the run down to eight you can see him working the car and positioning it perfectly this guy has uh you know, he knows what he's doing around the streets of adelaide that's for sure he won the round here two years ago in the tinta car commodore you can not see shy on that oh. curb on the inside there on the the closing stages that's for sure Here's Matthew Hamilton, the Team Kiwi Falcon, which is being run by Matthew White's team. This car dropped on the seven cylinders in the first race. They've had an engine change for this one. And Sounds it like been, it's done the same. Yeah, it doesn't sound terribly healthy. So Team Kiwi making a return to V8 Supercars after moving out of the Championship Series last year. Back with Perkat in the Sip and Save Commodore. 
think he can keep his head up high. He's done a great job this weekend and uh, you know, a tough call on the mirror there that uh, gave him the drive through. Certainly we understand that you know we don't want debris bouncing around the racetrack, but that was still, and it stayed on for quite a few laps. It didn't look like it was going to drop off. Those are the rules. Nevertheless, he's pushing on and getting more experience before the next round of the championship at Queensland Raceway. Steve Owen here with a bit of lap traffic to contend with. Staying well off the curbs on this final lap. Uh, just running around, I think, Noonan to uh, make sure he, he reads the flag first. Has been the four man again in this race, set the fastest lap back on lap 12, 1 minute 23.1. But he reset the lap record in the first race to prove exactly what sort of speed this car has. James Moffat has not given up the fight. He has absolutely been at 10 tenths the whole way, but just needs a little bit more time with this car and with his new engineer, Grant McPherson. But he's really the best of the guys who are going to do the full championship. No, he's done a good job this weekend. It's, uh, you know, it's a tough place to come and be quick when you haven't got as much experience pays for everything here. And, uh, yeah, I think once we get to the other circuits, he'll show his true speed. Steve Owen has been the full man. He's on target here at the last corner for a complete clean sweep in the first round of the Fujitsu V8 Supercar Series. The former champ has cleaned them up. Steve Owen takes round one in Adelaide. A dominant performance from the Victorian. Moffat home in second place. Very good start to his championship. It starts the way it finished last year in second place. David Russell, that's a fight back. 14th on the grid, third at the end. No, it's, a, it's a great job for him. He's a great, uh, strong end to the race and uh, paid off with his result, that's for sure. Fourth for Ant Pedersen gives him third overall for the weekend. Drew Russell moved all the way through to sixth, but Bryony's with our round winner. Steve, great job this weekend. The question everyone wants to know, will you be back? Well, we always say it's a one-off, but when you jump in and have a good result like that, you just never know what can happen in the future. We've got some good sponsors in Powerbuilt and EarthX, and if we can get some other guys on board and get some momentum, you know, we show them we can do a good job for the team, and Greg Murphy Racing are a championship winning team, so we hope we can do it for them. The perfect score of 300 points for Steve Owen, Moffat second from Pedersen, Nick Perkat fifth, the great start of the championship. But for Moffat, it's still a very solid beginning. Good start to the championship, and uh, yeah, clearly Steve had a good car this weekend and just had that little bit of extra speed on us. So certainly if he comes back, um, he'll be a good challenge for us, and um, we'll go away at the same time and, and look at what we can do to improve. A great start for Steve Owen. The question is, though, will we see more of him later in the season? Well, what a way to begin the Fujitsu V8 Supercar Series for 2010. We've had a great weekend on the streets of Adelaide, and the championship continues with round two at Queensland Raceway in Ipswich. The V8 Supercar Championship Series returns soon. The next event, across the Tasman, the ITM Hamilton 400. On behalf of the whole crew, thanks for your company today. We'll see you next time.